this is George Sicalius, and this is uh, Sprint 4. Um, I'm going to start with a quick demonstration of the alarms, the multiple alarms. Uh, so on the uh, ship, I have uh, three alarms set up, each um, going off um, with their given times. Um, oh, um, I know there were some uh, questions from last week about uh, uh, deleting uh, the game objects. So I set up some uh, uh, debugging uh, messages just to prove that I'm actually deleting uh, the game object game objects properly. So first scene sh ship delete which deletes the ship which calls that which goes to here uh, that then calls the game objects delete and the alarm bulls and all the other bulls deletes um, actually looking inside of an bubble I have the uh, destructors uh, set to virtual um, so yeah so all the objects are getting deleted um, also before I forget, uh, keyboard manager, um, it also deletes all of its, uh, managers as well. Um, yeah. Okay, so back to alarm bulls. Um, so the user can have at most three alarms. Um, I have, uh, I'm storing, uh, the registration data for all the alarms inside of an array of registration data. Um, so each alarm has its corresponding uh, commands and its uh, state. Um, yeah. Uh, so in alarmable, it's very similar to the other apples. I'm uh, checking to see what my current state is. Um, just to make sure I don't double register, deregister um, an object. Uh, I then uh, send my, uh, the corresponding token uh, for my given alarm. So I'm passing in uh, an idea to the correspond corresponding alarm, uh, which I then use to access its corresponding token. Um, that's the only real different from the other ovals. Um, uh, one thing I am doing differently, because in my alarm bull manager, I'm deregistering immediately after uh, calling the alarm. I, uh, I decided to be more lenient when it came to a double deregistration. So instead of throwing an assert, I just ignore it uh, completely. Um, this is because, um, so this will deregister it, but if the user, um, uh, registers it again to the, uh, send, submits it again for registration, um, like I'm doing within ship, um, then in essence, uh, this isn't really doing anything. Um, so if the user uh, resets the alarm, then it's their responsibility to uh, deregister it. Um, I'm fi I figure it's better, like, say if the user didn't uh, reset the alarm, I figure it's better that the user can accidentally double deregister something than uh, register something twice. Um, so yeah. Um, alarm manager. Um, I'm using a switch statement for now. I know this isn't ideal. Um, I believe there is some discussion about using a command pattern, uh, to get around this. Um, uh, but yeah, this is what I'm using for now. I I'm gonna change it. Um, okay. So that's multiple alarms. Um, 
What else did I do this week? Oh, uh, input manager. Um. Oh, a uh, small caveat. I'm for all of my enum classes. I'm just storing them in their own header. Um, this just uh, for me, this just helps like prevent any uh include loops uh, within functions and I don't necessarily need to remember like where I'm storing alarm number I, I just know that there is a file where I'm storing that I'm not storing it in like alarm bull manager and just, it, it, it just helps uh, decouple things so yeah just small caveat um <laughs> yeah uh, input manager input inputables um so I did something really similar to the alarmables um except I set it up so that the user can have as many uh key command key events as they uh want. Um so instead of storing uh a register So I'm storing a registration data for each of the events um however I'm storing them inside of a map. Um so in essence, the user can add as many as they want, and it'll just be added uh, to the map. Um, yeah, I'm storing them by their uh, the corresponding key and the event associated with them, uh, whether uh, it's a release event or a pressed event. Um, I imagine we're going to add some more events to that. Um, registration, pretty much the same. Um, in submit in submit registration, I check to see if the uh, current uh, key and type combo exists. If it doesn't exist, then I create a new um, uh, registration entry uh, for it um, here. Otherwise, I just use the existing one. Um. So yeah. And then it's registration data. It holds uh, the registration command that gets passed to the broker. Uh, broker actually registers it to. Oh, right. So it calls register. The broker calls register, which calls this, which will then call uh, through transitivity uh, the keyboard manager. Um, which we call its register. So it gives it the inputable, the, the actual inputable, the key and the uh, event type. Um, it'll then check to see that a single key manager exists. If it doesn't, I'll create a new one. Um, so to clarify, keyboard manager uh, just holds a uh, map of a uh, single key managers which actually process the inputables. Uh, the keyboard manager is responsible for processing the single key managers. Um, so yeah, it creates a new single key manager and then it adds the inputable to the single key manager. Uh, the register right here. And then as I said, this single key manager is responsible for um, actually uh, processing um, the inputable events. Um, so this is what I came up with for my, my um, uh, to check for uh, uh, pressed and released events. Um, so, okay, so I have a feeling that this is bad practice, but I have to... Uh, um, lists, uh, one for the, uh, pressed events and one for the, uh, released events. Um, uh, yeah. So that's why I have to have this, uh, else, if and an else if. Um, ideally, instead of storing inside, a uh, keyboard manager, just the Azul key and the single key manager, I believe I should have a, um, Azul key with its event pair, like, yeah, pair, and then also store the single key manager with that pair. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, 
anything else? Uh, register, deregister, nothing. Oh, um, just to clarify, um, do I do it here? No, I don't. Okay. Okay, so. <laughs> no, oh, I do it in my update managers. Okay, so. <laughs> What I forgot to add for these were um, a couple of certs for in their delete, uh, just to make sure that when they're deleted, everything has been deregistered. Um, so apparently I haven't done that for those two yet, but for my drawable manager and mother... Mm. Okay. <laughs> I could have sworn I was doing it in that. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I'm doing it in the manager. Okay. Cause, yeah, because... Okay. So, I'm storing my actual uples inside of the alarmable managers. Well, I'm registering to them. And... Oh, I'm terrible with words. Okay, so... Just when I okay, so whenever I delete a manager, I check to see to make sure that its list of registered items is empty, to just to make sure that everything that's been registered it has been deregistered. Um, so yeah, that that's that's all I was trying to say. Um, but yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, last thing is game object uh, registration. So, okay, so um, from a previous week, I know there's some discrepancy about um, storing uh, data members inside of the game object. I remove those. If a user wants to add something to a game object, that's on them. Um, the only data members on a, inside the game object class is the uh, command uh, exit and entry commands uh, for registering to the scene. Um, yeah. Okay, so this functions a lot like the ubbles. Um, if an object wants to register to the scene, it has to submit an, a request uh, using submit entry um, that will effectively send the uh, command uh, token to the uh, broker. Um, Actually, let me just pull that up really fast. Yeah. Okay, so my game object entry commands, they're just uh, scene commands, just like my other uh, bubble commands. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, back to game object. So, submit the command command then calls connect to scene and then inside connect to scene is where I call um, scene entry and this scene entry scene exit they're user defined it's the user's responsibility to add in all of the uh, necessary calls to actually register an object to the scene uh, such as registering um, it's drawable and updatable. Uh, where did I do that in bullet? So yeah, so scene entry, user has to uh, submit all their, uh, submit registration for all of their uh, ovals. Um, and then scene exit, alternatively have to submit their deregistrations. Um, Okay, so I can now show uh, key input and uh, scene registration in progress. Uh, so, when a bullet is created, um, actually, I'll just do it. Okay, so pressing a key. 
Uh, so ship pressed, fired a bullet. After some time, the bullet um, deregistered itself. If I release the key, ship released, I can press a different key, which does a different event. I'm pressing U, I release that. Should press you. Okay. Um, so actual uh, scene registration and deregistration. Um, so I fire a bullet. Um, what that does is inside the ship, it actually creates a bullet. Uh, goes to the bullet factory. Bullet submit. Bullet factory submits. Um, It's uh, entry registration uh, to the broker, which then uh, it also calls initialize, which but submits itself to the broker, calls connect to scene, calls scene entry, uh, does all this, and then after some time, uh, submit exit is called, sends its uh, corresponding token, and then calls a uh, scene uh, deregister disconnect from scene then scene deregister scene exit <laughs> so yeah um so yes i i i think that's it all right